So I'm going to speak on behalf of the multinational investigators for this study. And actually, Dr. Johnson and I have been collaborating on the development of this agent for a number of years. And you can see he's listed as one of the authors as well. Uh, the proposed trade name for the drug, Vendetinib, is uh, Zakima, hence the Z, and the name Zodiac. This is a phase three trial, 1,391 patients. Can we please go back? I didn't do that. This is a phase three trial, 1,391 patients for recurrent lung cancer. So as opposed to maintenance therapy that you've heard about, where the patients begin their therapy before they've even progressed, right after their frontline therapy, here we wait until they progress. And unfortunately, in advanced metastatic disease, which is more than half the patients with lung cancer, almost everyone will. We then treat them with the drug docetaxel, which has been a standard of care for a number of years with a placebo, or docetaxel with this oral agent, this pill, vendetinib. The trial, as you can see, had approximately 700 patients in both groups. You can see the doses. These doses came out of a phase one and two study, uh, 100 milligrams uh, a day of the oral agent. Well, the uh, background for this uh, stems from some work of the late Judah Folkman uh, that's then been confirmed in lung cancer by a number of investigators, including ourselves. And the idea is that a tumor is an organ. You have the tumor cells, but you also have blood vessels. You have stroma, the connective tissue that holds it all together. So for the best offensive against this disease, the idea would be to target both the tumor and the blood vessels alike. And as you can see on this slide, here we have the tumors and, and the adjacent blood vessels. And the idea is why not target both? Dual inhibition. Now that's already been talked about uh, in this conference by Dr. Miller. That's the idea of taking the drug erlotinib and bevacizumab and using them together. The idea behind vendetinib, however, is here you have it all in one pill. It's a multi-targeted agent, and the advantages, of, the, of course, of that could be convenience, perhaps cost. The disadvantages, of course, are you can't dial up exactly the activity you want in any given patient. But you can see from this table here that this agent has activity against vascular endothelial growth factor, that's what gets the blood vessels, and epidermal growth factor, that's what gets the tumor. But it doesn't have activity against another uh, 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 group of kinases. So it's specific for a couple of different activities, the ones that we feel would be beneficial in this group of patients. And as I mentioned, preclinical data and early uh, phase 1-2 data supported the trial that we undertook. Well, here's our primary uh, endpoint, progression-free survival, 1,391 patients. And as you've seen this morning, here are our survival curves. Uh, the orange are the patients who, after failing chemotherapy, got vendetinib plus docetaxel. The blue are the patients who got uh, the docetaxel plus a placebo, a one-to-one -one randomization. You can see the hazard ratio is 0 0.79. That's a p-value less than 0 0.001, and you can see that there's benefit pretty much across the entire survival curve. That's a 21% benefit. There were secondary endpoints for this uh, trial. We were, would, of course, have been thrilled to see uh, improvement um, in uh, overall survival. Uh, overall survival showed a positive trend, although this did not reach statistical significance. The hazard ratio there was 0 0.91. Um, with a p-value of 0.196. The median overall survival for the vendetinib group was 10.6 months versus 10.0 for the control. We will take another look at these data as they mature, hopefully later this year. There was significant improvement in objective response rate, almost doubling when you got the two drugs versus the one. And improvement in disease control rate, uh, meaning uh, this is slight, but showing patients with lack of progression or stable disease. I think very important is to look at symptoms, especially when you're looking at lack of progression. So patients took these two agents. They had uh, lack of progression, but did that make them feel better? So we, uh, and I'll show this tomorrow in the presentation, uh, did, a, did a symptom index looking at time to deterioration of symptoms. And this was significantly longer um, uh, in the group that got the two drugs, the vendetinib plus the docetaxel versus the docetaxel alone, with a hazard ratio of 0 0.77 with a p-value of 0 0.001. So progressed more slowly, uh, symptoms progressed more slowly as well, overall survival a trend. Was it safe? So if you're going to do this, you have to ask, could patients tolerate that? And I'm happy to say the answer is yes. The adverse event uh, profile was consistent with that observed in other uh, studies. So what you normally get with these small oral agents are rash and diarrhea, and we were not surprised by those, and we've learned quite well how to manage them. We saw a little bit more neutropenia, low white blood counts. Again, we can manage that as well. And just a slight bit more of hypertension. What we did not see was pulmonary hemorrhage. And for those of you who have been to these conferences over the last four or five years, as we've presented these small molecules and even bevacizumab, that's a major concern in lung cancer, bleeding from the lung. We did not see that in this trial in a large, almost 1,400 patient trial. 
adverse events actually were less frequent in the arm. I can't explain this, but we saw less nausea, vomiting, and anemia. Probably something about the drug that's, that's producing that. But that was actually seen across a number of studies that will be presented at this meeting with this agent. So just to conclude, what I've shown you is a positive trial, meaning its endpoint of progression-free survival uh, was a hazard ratio of 0.79. I showed you that symptoms um, are improved. I've also shown you that uh, the drug is safe. And to my knowledge, this is the first instance in the second line therapy of lung cancer where a doublet therapy, a small molecule or any agent for, for that matter, added to docetaxel has shown a benefit. Uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to present it today. Thank you. So as uh, one of the things with maintenance therapy, it kind of blurs the line between what we've typically thought of as relapsed. You know, there's a number, there's three different drugs that are approved for patients who've received one uh, type of chemotherapy and then progressed docetaxel, pemetrexid, and erlotinib. And this one shows that by adding something to one of those other drugs, it prolongs survival.